Hey, everybody. Guess what? Another episode of 50 Conversations with 50 Strangers. And I'm soon, I think, going to have to start calling these 50 Conversations with 50 people who used to be strangers. And now I feel so close to them. I want them to be like my closest friends. Because because what's happening through the course of these conversations, which I'm already seeing, which I'm, I'm maybe in, into my 50, I'm maybe like 25 conversations or 20 conversations in. But there's certain themes that are developing, and those themes I'll highlight afterwards when when we have them all. But the amazing thing about this, which you've already gotten from the first sentence that I said, is people that we never even know, people that I've never, I, I never even knew Trainice Palmer existed 10 minutes ago. And yet we have a con we, um, we're sitting here in the green room. We had a short conversation. I didn't want too much to happen, yeah. but already from her podcast, which is called true talks podcast, where she talks to people about important things and, and things that matter. And my podcast, the mosaic podcast, we're already in sync already. If nothing more happened, the smile that she had on her face when we came on and just the sense of, 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 of hooking up with each other when we came on, already I feel close to her and I, and I don't even know her. So the beauty of these conversations is in a world where we're 800 pe- billion, eight, I'm sorry, 8 billion people strong. Wow. How's it possible <laughs> to know everybody? But when we take the time to sit with some people that we, don't, that we never even met, what's shocking to me is how similar we are. So this is not meant to be a monologue. Uh, this is meant to be a conversation. <laughs> I'm going to try and be quiet now. Trenice, welcome to the podcast. Welcome and thank you for having the courage to be a part of 50 Conversations with 50 Strangers. How are you today? I'm pretty well. I'm hanging in there. I love, love, love that introduction because um, it's, it's my entire life. It's what I go through life living by. You know, I think it's the one thing that makes most people very relatable and that that sense of strangers connecting but it feels like the perfect stranger like you've always known them you just haven't had the time to really cultivate that relationship but you're right you have to take the time out to get to know people and start you know doing something as radical as this I consider this very radical you never know who you're meeting you know but being willing to do that I think is a great opener and so I'm always game for stuff like this yeah I was inspired to do it by a guy who I, I read about on LinkedIn, he, he wanted to have 500 lunches with people and wow. he was going to buy them lunch. Wow. And it took him a thousand calls to get a hundred people to say yes. Wow. And yeah. I thought, wow, that's, you know, that's strange. And, and I'm going to have him on my podcast also to just cool. talk about it because, but people thought he was trying to pick them up. He was trying to sell them something. They didn't trust him. They didn't know what he was doing. And so they just didn't even, most of them didn't even answer. But there was a quality to the people who did answer that he said, I want to live my life like these people. Yeah. And so even, even going into this, just in the very early stages, I'm wondering, is it the people that respond that, that have this point of view (laughs) or even the people that don't respond that would have this point of view if they just only responded and took the time. What do you think about that? Do you think? I don't know. There may be some calling behind that. You know, it's the same as when some people bear witness to certain situations, they feel compelled to do something and then others just walk on by. Uh, I I never know. I I think the story is within the actual story, if that makes sense. Oh, so much sense. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah, you don't know. You don't know. I feel like, you know, when people respond, and I I guess I like to, you know, credit the spirit for that when they respond to the spirit, telling them to do something outside of their norm, that's usually when you meet the person you're supposed to meet. And so in those instances, I think it was just humanity and also the spirit playing its role, bringing two people together was supposed to meet under whatever circumstance that was, you know. I love that. And I feel so attuned to that again. You know, what are we three minutes, five minutes into this conversation? Oh my and, God. and already I feel <laughs> like, oh, you know, oh my God, you're my, you're my buddy, right? Yeah. Same. We're doing virtual high fives. No, high five, absolutely. Hey. Hey. We're missing, I'm, I'm a little slow, but. Uh. <laughs> no, blame it on the delay. Never okay. take credit for it, no. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I, it's all the delay. I can't. Um, yeah. So I know exactly what you're speaking about. Yeah. 
that when spirit drives, when spirit, when you allow spirit to guide you, it guides you to the things that are, that you need to just be in front of. Yeah. But for those people who don't have any idea what that means, can you share with, with them what oh, that wow. means? That's a, that's a big ass there. Uh, <laughs> Cause I feel like it's very individualistic, you know? And so what I may experience the spirit as someone else may not, you know, it may be in a different form, something that they're very much more relatable to. Um, but for me, what I've, I feel like is I'll sum it up with something I read by Devon Franklin. He has a book out that's called um, the 10 commandments of success, I believe. Um, and it's primarily geared towards people who identify themselves as Christians, but anyone can read the book, honestly, and get yeah. the same sentiments out of it. But he said, your gut is hiding God. And wow. so in that, it kind of simplified these big constructs, you know, even beyond religion. We're talking spirituality now. If you feel like in your gut, there's something that you can't shake, that you didn't conjure yourself, that you're just... It living in the moment and something happened to cause you to focus on that one thing, I feel like that's what the spirit is leading you to do, you know, and that, that right there, you, it gets lost in a day's time because there's so totally. much going on, you know, and people just have to be willing to live in whatever moment that is, stop what you're doing and respond, obey the spirit. And so for me, if there was any way of explaining that, it would be the same way that he offers in his book, which is your gut is hiding God. Your gut is hiding God. Yeah. So your tell me. Hiding but, God. So I expected you to say something different because your gut is hiding God <laughs> would mean if you follow you, what meant to me, if I follow my gut, that God will, would not be there. Be there. But no. you're saying when you follow your gut, God mm -hmm. is there. Yeah, because if you think about it, you know, I identify as a Christian, but I always tell people I'm far more spiritual than I am religious. And, um, but if you are one that subscribes to the Christian doctrine, um, in Genesis, he talks about how there's a spirit within, you know, the second that Adam and Eve, every, the big the big conversation everybody always has about eating the fruit, you know, um, and like that allowed them to become like God in that experience because they were not, they were not exposed to, didn't have the knowledge or the power of discernment to mm -hmm. even know between right and wrong. They were just being. And we don't know what that's like as humans, yeah. you know, yeah. we're from, from, from start, you know, from infant up, we're taught what to believe, how to respond. We, when we get in trouble, we know when, because it's instantly addressed and we then decipher between what is considered right and what is considered wrong. What started as just an action is now a teachable moment. And so I feel like going back to your, <laughs> your initial question of the spirit, it's like we were left with something within. Yeah. when that happened and so it didn't make us a god but it made us god-like in the way in which we were able to think and so that's why i always say the gut is what before we even identified as the holy spirit when when jesus comes into the picture and we lose him and he leaves something behind and he says i'm with you that's what i identify as and sometimes people can say it's their gut because the gut has made people do a lot of things that is not understandable but it, it panned out right for them yeah yeah so so for those people who were like me that heard the gut is hiding god mm -hmm. and thought that if you if you follow your gut that god's hiding yeah listen to what she's saying because she's saying what she's saying is so beautiful because we all know what's right. And if there, we have a gut instinct. We know, we know our gut tells us to do something. Mm -hmm. And sometimes our head says, oh, I can't do that. Or I, that, um, what am I going to do? Like even having a conversation, 50 conversations with 50 strangers, who's going to be on the other line? What are they going to think? What are they going to say? What, <laughs> how's it going to show up? But when the gut drives you and says, no, this is what, something I want to do, just follow it. Yeah. And if our podcast, if this would end right now, I, th I think Trinice has given you something <laughs> that, is, that is so valuable here um, to just do that. So, Trinice, tell us some more about you. Oh, man. I mean, I'm an East, Nash East Nashville native. Um, I'm one of a few natives that are still here. Um, because this area is seeing a lot of gentrification. I mean, it's nowhere around. It's a lot of development. 
um, a lot of tax hikes and all of that. So it's a lot of political things happening and just development in general. Um, so I always wear that on my sleeve of pride, you know, and that I'm, I'm still here and I'm still on the soil. And uh, so, yeah, that's one thing about me. Um, I'm a college graduate. I went to Belmont University. I studied media studies um, with the emphasis in video production. But oddly enough, I love science. And so I minored in chemistry and took wow. all the way up through analytical chemistry. Um, and so literally, if I went back and got a bachelor's degree, I would just have to start with lab work. <laughs> wow. You know, if I could test out of the courses, because it's been two years since I graduated. So I, there will have to be some type of exam or something. But I don't doubt that I wouldn't pass it. Um, so I love chemistry. And I like sharing that piece of me because people who talk to me and have opened up with me about, you know, personal um, testimonies and stuff, they always get the spiritual side of me. But that oftentimes don't coexist, you know, the yeah. higher you go up through science, the less you believe. And for me, it strengthened my belief um, because I feel like science validates a lot of even religion and spirituality as I've come to know it. Um, and so that leads me to my next point. I'm a very deep thinker. Uh, yes. I derive from a long lineage of deep thinkers, uh, especially women. Uh, and so as I peel back my uh, genealogy, I'm learning more and more that more than likely it's not just me that you're meeting you know i echo the sentiments of you know those before me my ancestors um and so yeah i always tell people what trenice wouldn't have done you know my ancestors would have and so it just all works itself out in this form <laughs> if that yeah. makes sense uh i'm also a gardener i love you know gardening and teaching others how to do that um and so i use whatever platform i have like social media um, to actually teach people how to just start wherever you are in the process, just start growing things. Um, and then lastly, I'm a podcaster, you know, and I'm trying to remain consistent in that and just like you have conversations with people and try to educate as much as possible. I don't always get it right, but the motive and the intentional is always good. You know, the yeah. intent is always good. So yeah. that's room for improvement <laughs> if there's anything that's ever wrong about it, right? <laughs> What a beautiful, beautiful answer. And, and what, what I love, like I wrote this book called The Mosaic, which is behind me, and the image of the mosaic is not really what it's about, but I love the imagery that comes with the, with the mosaic, which is we are, have so many different pieces that make up who we are. And so often people don't think about, in order to be a spiritual person, I can't be a scientist, but quantum physics now is blowing yeah. religion out of, the, out of the, <laughs> you know, the water. And it's showing from a scientific point of view how everything in the world is not, is not solid, it's energy. And yeah. that the, the same energy that's in you right this minute is in me the next second or vice versa. And that that energy travels at speeds that are so much greater than anything we could ever know. And there's so much possible when we, when we look at a microscope at our, at our solid hand, yeah. there's nothing solid in our hand. It's just swirls of energy. That mind blowing. <laughs> right. Cause this it's, is, this feels solid, right? It's, right. It's so hard to believe. Yeah. And so one of the principles of the mosaic, the book, which is just a story about a boy who loses his parents two years apart and asks the adults where his parents are they tell him they're in a place, he's in a place called heaven. So he sets out in search of the place called heaven. And the people that he meets along the way are not the rabbis and the ministers and the priests and the shamans and the gurus and the, you know, the, the medicine men. They're the homeless guy and the street worker, yeah. the trash man and the gardener, the juice man and the waitress and the traveler. And he wonders, why am I meeting these people? Because he, he's, he wonders, how are they going to show me heaven? Oh, wow. But he hears this voice that says to him, just listen to them. Just sit with them and let them tell you their story. And the more he listens to them tell the story, the more he realizes the person he initially saw isn't at all the person that they are. Wow. And, and soon he realizes, hold it, I don't see anything the way it is. I see only, I see only things the way I am. Yeah. And That's when he's... <laughs> when he catches that, he sees, he goes over to the right and he looks and he sees a monk unzipping the sky and invite him into a parallel reality where he meets the wise one who's the keeper of the mosaic. So nothing is as it seems. 
no. is really one of the big messages of that book. And really, that's what you're saying as well. So, mm-hmm. again, you know, what are we, eight, to eight minutes in to, you know, nine <laughs> minutes in? I'm going to let you keep count of that. <laughs> I, 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 don't, I don't have it. I don't have it down. I'm, yeah. I'm making guesses. Yeah. Um, what makes you happy? Uh, family, for sure. Dogs. I love dogs. I always say if I could trade some humans in for dogs, I would, you know. <laughs> It'd probably get a little lonely, but, you know, um, and gardening. I mean, really, you know, if there was things that I could, um, I guess, credit for happiness that that would be the three main things uh but personally i mean being able to reach my highest potential in life whatever that may look like it as long as it aligns with my calling i'm good if i sit on this earth and i obtain wealth and i obtain all the things that sometimes you desire to have you know because we live in a very uh, uh monetized world and it's very much so driven by through transaction and so it's natural to the to want to acquire totally. the finer things in life. But uh, yeah, my main thing is living out my calling. If I can't do that, I wasted time, you know. So that's where my happiness lies. I love that. <laughs> yeah. So what I can't you lob that over the net that I have to ask. What is your calling? Um, I don't know yet. I think I think every day I feel like I know it a little bit more than others, but at base uh i think that helping people is definitely a portion of it you know it's definitely a portion of why i'm here um but lately i've been focusing on the whole of humanity and getting people to realize that they have purpose at the end of all of my videos i always say be blessed in every day that god gives you your life is full of purpose until yeah. next time, deuces. And that's how I sign off. And so somewhere in that, I feel like is where my calling lies. Wow. I love that. I love it. Yeah. Let me change the momentum for a minute. And then I want to come back. I just want to give a little break. Okay. Cause we, right. ju- we jumped in before I even realized where we were going. Right. <laughs> yeah. uh, lightning round of questions. Okay. I'm you ready. already, you sort of, you sort of already answered the first one, but I have to <laughs> ask it. Dogs or cats? Dogs. For sure. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> and coffee or tea? Tea. Ooh, wow. cause chocolate mint and tea is just amazing, man. <laughs> tea. Okay, a little tidbit that you may not have known. <laughs> chocolate mint and tea is amazing. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Are you someone people would say is in the box or out of the box? Definitely out of the box. Well. Yeah. And do you think it's more important to speak your truth or to listen to the truths of others? Oh, that is hard speak your truth or listen to the truth of others or it ah oh, that's hard see this is where the either or becomes a problem right so i want so, the and world <laughs> okay so tell me about the and world you can do that okay so if i'm speaking my truth as long as it's justified in a greater means i think that would be good but listening to others you can learn more that makes sense yeah totally. so yeah, sometimes I don't listen. I'm not the best listener. But when I when I lock into it and I become an avid listener, I get a lot out of it versus when I was speaking. So that I'm working on. But yeah, I feel like both needs. I can't pick one over the other with that. <laughs> uh, that's, that's so fair. I, I think I would do the same thing because one of the things that one of the reasons why I'm having this this little podcast that I'm doing is yeah. because I want people to be able to speak their truth. And the same reason is I want to learn to listen better to what people are saying, because I think that if we would listen more, we would have less disagreements, less wars, less struggles, less, yeah, because sure. we don't listen to each other. Um, are you someone that lives in your head more or in your heart more? I'd have to say the head. Okay. Yeah. So it's always uh, going. <laughs> I, I understand. And are you a leader or a follower? Definitely a leader. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Somehow, I, I think I knew the answer to that. Um, do you think people in general are are more different than they are alike or more alike than they are different? More alike than they are different. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So, so many people answer that. And yet, when we look like we're, we're living right now in a time of COVID-19, we're living in a time of, of race protests. Um, we just watched a movie on Netflix, uh, um, 
around what was going on in 1968, the revolution, the with with you know the the Eldridge Cleaver and 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 when we heard the words that they were saying, they're exactly the same words that we're saying now, and that was what 50 years ago. Strange. And yeah. and we still have we and we've made some progress, but so little progress. So when you think about the fact that we're more similar than we are different, do you have any insight as to why people focus on the differences that we have rather than the similarities? Yeah, I think it's, it's, it echoes the same sentiment of when things go wrong, you tend to remember that a lot more. Uh, and so the same is with the difference. You know, if someone makes me question my own judgment, it's uncomfortable to live in that space. Right. Yeah. But I think for, for starters, we have to know who we are before we even engage with people, at least know some significant part of ourselves to where when we engage with someone, offense is not taken immediately. We don't close ears to stuff. We're still able to relate and hear people, even if it's unlike what we expected or what we wanted to hear. Um, and so I feel like that's where we give room for differences to overshadow the similarities. Um, yeah, that's that's about all. So, uh, no, I, and I love that. So, yeah. are you saying, just so I get it right, are you saying that because we're not comfortable in ourselves, or if we don't know ourselves, then when people question what we believe, then we more silo ourselves and we and yeah. we and we create conflicts there. But if we were comfortable in ourselves, we would be able to listen to what other people were saying, For and sure. and 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 actually innovate from that right? Because yeah. like innovation comes when we take new ideas that we've never heard thought before and implement them into the way we're living our life. But if we only yeah. listen to the people saying the same exact ideas, where's the innovation? Yeah. The, yeah. And I mean, that's, that's the groundwork, you know, that's for start. But so many people, you know, experience life differently. They're taught so many different things. And so by the time you encounter someone who doesn't think the way you do, it's hard to accept, you know, because you've been taught for so long a certain way. That's the primary, I feel like that's the main reason why racism is still in existence. Having yeah. been on this world for so long in different parts of the country, mind you, even outside of the U.S., is that so many people have been able to generate, generationally pass things down um, that just should have died off with the yeah. first incident. You know, the first hanging should have ended any form of racism the first genocide should have been something that never occurred because you already had abuse happening before that and so it's the differences that catches the most light because it is the most uncomfortable thing to deal with but conversations like these is what we need to nurture more often 100 percent. and some of those conversations are happening on true talks podcast which is <laughs> yeah. Which is Tra Sometimes it's podcast. calm, Mrs. Sometimes not so calm. I'll be the first to tell you. As the host, sometimes I dive all the way in, and then the next week I'm a lot calmer, or I bring someone in that's you know had the similar viewpoint as myself, but just talking about something from a different perspective. So the topic changes. Um, but yeah, we we go through the range of emotions on my podcast. I love it. Why not? That's what we do. <laughs> yeah. So. One of the things that really surprised me about me during this time of COVID and these times of race protests, when, from the moment I was born till now, I've jokingly said, I'm really pissed at God because at the last minute, he made me a white man instead of a black man. <laughs> I was supposed to be a black man. <laughs> and I didn't, I didn't like the fact that he made me a white man, that I wanted yeah. to be a black man. So yeah. During this time of race relations and, and protests, someone said to me, you know, it would be a good idea for you to take this Harvard standardized test. And there's a, oh, there's, yeah. a, there's a test that where they look at race, they look at finances, they look at borders, you know, and they look at all these different prejudices that people have. And so I took the one on race, thinking that I'm the least racist person that could possibly exist. Yeah. I was appalled. Yeah. Because what I found was that I have a greater propensity to want to be with white people than with darker people. Yeah. And I thought, gosh, if I have that, then yeah. what do my brothers and sisters have? 
because I, I, I consciously don't think that. And yet unconsciously, the things have been buried so deep inside of us. Yeah. You know, the associations with light things being better than dark things, like we feel we're in the light versus we're in the dark. Yeah. You know, the White House is not called the, the Black House, right? Yeah. I mean, there's just so many different associations that we have that are just inherent in sort of the way we've grown up. Maybe not the way Black people have grown up, but I, I bet even, even Black people, because I had someone on who, my, my podcast, who was talking about abuse mm -hmm. and she said Danny you can feel bad about being a white person but even lighter skinned black people abuse darker skinned black people yeah it's colorism it's yeah. colorism yeah that's it's it's unfortunate because and it's great first off that you took that test you know because yeah. that means that you were in a space of being able to confront maybe the worst part to you or the better part to you, the parts that need improvement. And so that is a step that so often, you know, you see with white radicals and not willing to, to do that, any radical for that matter, but yeah. you have to be able to confront that and identify where are my problem areas, you know? And the only way that that can happen, right. It stemmed from a conversation, someone encouraging you to seize that opportunity to participate in identifying these things about yourself by even taking that test and so stuff like that needs to happen more often than not um but then once you find that correcting it because it is true like the way that you are is you know i would be appalled <laughs> you yeah. know having been so open and you know even this conversation now as much as we're relating you know to find that hey maybe i have some microaggressions that are occurring or Things yeah. that I'm holding on to that maybe I didn't realize in my action or the way in which I speak or think about it. So kudos to you <laughs> for you so taking much. that test and doing that, you know. But what I will say, you know, to your initial point of saying, you know, jokingly <laughs> that you thought God should have made you black. I mean, maybe, again, if we identify that calling and purpose, you're, you're sitting in a position of power just with having the flesh that you have, the color that you have to use that white privilege, you know, to do things like this. You know, uh -huh. you've, you've created a whole book around identif identity, pretty much. It may yeah. not start it that way, but that, yeah. you're yeah. gonna have so many stories and, and um, testimonies yeah. of different people, of different walks of life that feel comfortable enough to come on here and share that with your audience. And they did have anyone interjecting but listening. Yeah. Yeah. So that that's why you're created. In a yeah. Well, you know? I, I, I so thank you for that. And and, yeah. and um, I think it's so important just to be able to put ourselves in conversations and to just be able to listen. I think yeah. listening changes the context of everything. Yeah, um, when sure. we listen, do you believe that? Um, I understand that you believe listening is good people to people. Like if we listen to each other, is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. Do you, do you believe true. that inanimate objects, do you believe like the world is talking to us? The universe is talking oh, yeah. to us. Yeah. Oh right. yeah. Right. Nature uh, speaks. Nature speaks. Nature speaks, speaks to us. profoundly. So, <laughs> so what, if you feel comfortable, yeah. what do you feel the world is trying to say? To us now at this time with COVID-19, with race relations, oh, with wow. global warming, with all the things that are going on, what do you think it's trying to say to us? And then more specifically after that, what, if anything, do you think it's trying to say to you personally? Wow. Now you're stepping into my household because this is a <laughs> conversation that, you know, my entire household has often um, because at the beginning of this, and I'll, I mean, I'll start off um, personally to walk you through the process of my train of thought in that um, back in February, I, again, I'm in Tennessee and Nashville was hit pretty hard with some uh, tornadoes in March. And so we had the issue of the tornadoes and then COVID-19 follow up. Well, during that time, I was transitioning between two jobs, one that I absolutely love and anybody that knows me knows that I don't stay on jobs long. <laughs> if it's not something creative, you know, I'm not staying there long because it's not what I really want to do. I'm just there making sure I hit a certain dollar amount and that's it. 
Mm-hmm. But I found a job that I enjoyed and I stayed there the longest. It was my first full time job and I was there the longest uh, time that I've been with any of my jobs. And I walked away from it because I had an opportunity to really uh, boost my income somewhere else. And so I had all of these big plans that, hey, I can go here. I have this much time. I can give this because it was a seasonal position, but it was a federal contract. And so that allowed me to make more money than I'd ever made on any of these uh, regular jobs. And so like, okay, cool. I developed the plan, you know, financial plan and everything. And then we had the um, tornadoes to occur and I started helping out in different parts of Nashville because we had an issue here where East Nashville was receiving a lot of help and North Nashville, specifically Germantown was receiving a lot of help, but the poor black elderly area was not seeing any of that help. And so they weren't even being heavily promoted at the time. It wasn't until a um, black radio station put out that, hey, these people in this area of North Nashville needs help. They're sitting on porches with no structure behind them. They've lost everything. And mind you, these were EF4 and EF5s that came through Tennessee. And so we started going out there, being hands-on and uh, helping people and aiding them. That took a little bit of time away from my creative plan, but the financial plan was still going. Well, about a month or so after, about a month after we had the COVID-19 to really start taking off, and this is when people start rushing to the stores and gathering materials. We had one confirmed case at the place that I was working, my new job I had just transitioned wow. to. And uh, I had to leave that, you know, because the company itself didn't even inform us until like a a week after that person had been on the site. And so I left that job and I've been out of work since, you know, been just doing creative stuff. But, you know, just making sure that I'm leaning into the spirit and walking by the spirit every day is keeping me, you know, and of course, financial help from family. uh, But that's been my main thing. And so it caused me to ask the question of what are we supposed to be doing? And more specifically myself, this is a moment of not only just acknowledging whatever we need to work on, because apparently we weren't with, you know, time and things that were going on around us was affording us enough distance between our problems (laughs) and our everyday life. So this is everybody's fixated. Everybody's stuck. So there's something that we all need to address, right? What is that? So this is our moment of reflection. This is our moment of listening to God. You know, I always tell people praying is talking to him, meditation is listening to him. It's time to be still before him and listen and obey when he speaks because everybody has something they need to get out of this. If we go and re-enter the world, not as we knew it before, because it will never be that way. But when we go and we re-enter the world and we start to really engage and get back to the flow of things, we want to be better than what we were before all of this happened because that's what brought this to a halt. So I definitely feel like we're being called to sit back, assess the situation, do some personal reflections, and come out of this stronger and better than ever before. I'm going to do something I've never done, but as you were speaking, um, call it spirit, call it gut call it my intuition. I just felt something so strongly. If anyone is listening to this podcast that needs someone of, of beautiful spirit, intelligent presence, powerful, powerful persona, that you need someone to help you grow whatever it is you're growing, whatever business you're doing, that is in tune with the words that Trainees is saying, I want you to reach out to her. I'm going to post her her social media links and her web and her website. Her website is urbanthreads615.com. I want you to reach out to her and I want you, I want this to become a format where strangers can help strangers. Like it's one thing to have a conversation, but here's a super talented, super capable, super intelligent, super super beautiful (laughs) person that right now is saying because of the situation, she had everything that was going for her and then COVID-19 came and, and she volunteered to help and help help fix areas. And now she doesn't have that. If you have something for her that she can do from her home and that she can help you to do it, reach out and do it. Like, let's start to make this 
actionable, not just not just listenable. Like it's great to listen and it's great to have conversations, but the reason we do that is so that we can act. And in this time, just have a conversation with her, see what she is, see what she's capable of, see what you need and see if there's a way, who knows what can happen, right? It's Most, true. In a mosaic, <laughs> we're one piece away from a, from a whole new world. And maybe someone listening to this conversation will, will say, this is the one piece I've been looking for. Wow, thank you. I appreciate that. I was not expecting that to go there at all. Nor, <laughs> nor was I. Yeah. But, but when you listen to spirit, that's what happens, right? That's true. That's very true. So with that in mind, if you could do anything in the world, what would you want to do? Oh, I don't know. I think I, I definitely want to go to third world countries and do independent films long term. Like that's something that since I saw Slumdog Millionaire, yeah. <laughs> I was like, I want to go and just record stuff and just really show the world what other life stories look like abroad. Um, because I told you I was a student at Belmont and um, I went to college, graduated and all of that. And I studied media studies. Well, a fourth story to that is that um, I actually started off as a pre-med student, the reason wow. why the chemistry piece was still on there, that science. Um, but I had to let it go. I lost my grandmother and realized I didn't have that detachment that was required to be in that field. And so the second thing that I'm most passionate about is the way in which Blacks are perceived in America. And so yeah. at the time, I didn't really like it because we were dealing with a lot of racial um, things happening too. And so I was like, maybe I can play a role in the way in which we're being perceived abroad as well as in the States. Um, and so I just changed my major to mass communications and I was like, I think I want to, I want to get behind the, get behind the camera and get back to my roots because, uh, prior to that, I was going to Nashville school of the arts, um, here and, um, uh, I was studying mass communications and theater and I Love just it. dropped the ball on that and only did, um, high school theater plays when, when I, uh, moved to a different school and finished high school, um, I was only doing their plays and that was it. I didn't take it over into college. Um, and then I took up a children's theater class and it revamped that creative energy. It got me back to really getting back to writing scripts for film and, and theatrical purposes. And I was like, you know what? I want to tell stories through this medium and make sure that when, when I am perceived, somebody gives me the opportunity to speak and introduce myself versus whatever it is they thought of. I love that. And again, you know, another one of those moments where there's synchronicity where with a perfect stranger that, I mean, you're a perfect stranger. I'm an imperfect stranger, but the, yeah, the, perfect the, stranger. <laughs> the, the idea that we're the perfect strangers. One of the reasons why I'm doing this is because when I finished writing the mosaic the, where Mo went around to see and speak with all these people and listen to all these people, the book itself communicated to me and said, I want you to go around and do the same thing. I want you to sit on street corners and in government offices and in, with CEOs of companies and with schools and hospitals and homeless shelters. And I want you to ask people, I want you to just talk to people and listen. And I want you to ask them how they are and just listen. And I want you to film it. And I want you to be able to give voice to those people who feel voiceless and create a docu-series wow. that where we can do that. So you and I, my dear, need to stay in touch because sure. um, one of the things that I would love to have happen is that I'm not the only person that should have a camera in my hand because I don't even know how to do it. I took, I took one semester <laughs> of film in, in college before I dropped out. But, but if you know how to use a camera um, and I'm not the only person to ask the questions so that, I would love to have a conversation with you further down the line as to how we can work together to make some of those dreams of yours come true. And vice versa, for sure. Thank for you sure. so much. I, you know, it's crazy because uh, before I started this, my family was like, yeah, do you know anything about it? I was like, I responded to his post. I normally don't even get on there and respond to posts. But I was like, I just responded to his post. I checked out your podcast, you know, and uh, I was like, he's just going to be my wild card where I hop on there and let the chips fall where they may. They know I'm very outspoken about certain crap, so I'm never fearful. But it's just like, I'm just like, I'm just going into it with whatever. And yeah. it's just going to be what it's going to be. And I just, I'm just here for the experience. And all of this is just 
transpired out of this one conversation is mind blowing. Spirit yeah, we've been we've, we've been on what thirty five <laughs> minutes, and we're just uh, <laughs> right. And uh, yeah. and look at what can be possible if we choose to make it possible. Yeah. So I really hope that this will be the beginning of our conversations, not the end. It is. It is. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. Um, what is it? I want to be sensitive to time. So what is it that you really would like to say to people? Um, if you knew that they were really listening right now, what would you, what would you like to say? The start is take your time. This is not, this is not a sprint. It's a marathon. I'm just going to echo some folks who've talked to me. This is a marathon. And so as we walk down all of these problems from racism to COVID-19 issues, uh, marital issues, death, people are losing people in a way that they have not had to lose them. People are dying alone right now. Uh, I could tear up thinking about it, but um, yeah. this is a, an experience that not only I am experiencing, but we are experiencing for the first time in American history and worldwide, we get to view this as a problem in totality in co as a collective. It's not a, this person's problem or that person's problem. It's our problem. And yeah. so in order to work towards fixing whatever issue that is, as we've discussed many of them, we have to look within and we have to be open to others and learn to coexist. Yeah. That's it. That's I, it. I love <laughs> it. I love it. Yeah. I love it. How can people get in touch with you? Just because I know they're going to want to, because already I'm, I'm, I don't want to hog all of your talents to me. <laughs> I want people to get in touch with you. How would they do that? Uh, I'm on social media everywhere at urban thread 615. Um, that's pretty much a direct way where you can send me an email. It's a little bit lengthy, but it's urban threads discuss at yahoo.com. Okay. And that's the two ways you can get in touch with me. Perfect. And you will you please send me the those links so I can put them just, I have them just the way they're supposed to be. I will. You want me to send it to that email? I want you to send it that email and I want you to also um, send me your, uh, your headshot so that we can put that up because I think this will go up today or tomorrow pretty soon. I want to get it out and just uh, right. wait for people to, to start to support one another. What, what I love that happened in this conversation is you really helped me today because you helped me to see that what I'm doing is more than just conversations, more than just listening to strangers because I, I, I could rest there. I could rest in the thought of like, wow, isn't this cool? We're having conversations with people I don't know. And isn't that neat? And how much we share in common with each other. But you, in speaking with you, I felt spirit move me to another space. Wow. And that space was, how do, we, how do we do more than conversations? How do we actually come together as a mosaic, come together as a community, come together as one race, the human race, yeah. to help our brothers and sisters? When we're down, what do we do? Why would we stand on the sidelines? Why would we just not do that? Like we would want that if we were if we were in need or our children were in need, we would want people to reach out to help them. Why won't we do that? Let's do it. Let's yeah. create let's create a new subset to this world that we're living in that is a subset where we just support one another and help each other and grow with one another. And we'll give opportunities to one another. If you look at a mosaic one piece away from the piece that surrounds it is a whole new reality. And I believe that we are one connection, one piece, one thing, one moment away from having the, everything we want in a whole new life, if that's what we want. So let's take those opportunities now, make these connections. Wow, that's beautiful. That is beautiful. Shredis, I, I want to thank you. You've touched me today in a deep way. And and for taking for listening to your spirit and, and for showing up here and for trusting this conversation i want you to know you really moved my heart and i really am thankful for you oh man the same it's likewise trust me trust me <laughs> I, I i do and and again let's have more conversation let's keep it going okay we will we will i look forward to it hey you be blessed man you too. For those of you listening and for Trinis, thank you again for being here. For those of you who have given your time to listen to this conversation, thank you so much for listening. For those of you who I know are going to already reach out to Trinis and see how you can 
help her or, or be there for her or have her help you. It's not yeah. a matter of she doesn't need fixing, she doesn't need helping, she doesn't need yeah. you to correct her. <laughs> Just how do we come together and make something great together? Absolutely. For those of you willing to do that, I, I thank you in advance for that. I look forward to meeting you guys. <laughs> so, Abs absolutely. Let's make some magic happen. <laughs> absolutely. Magic is waiting here. Let's do it. So for all of you, thank you so much. And until next conversation, I want to encourage you. To go up to somebody you don't know and just ask them how they are. Who knows what will happen? Wow. Until until then, I'll see you next one. Thank you so much. God bless. <laughs>